Hello, everybody. This is um, our video for 3.2 that's going to introduce us to functions, and it's going to talk about relations and functions. First off, we've got learning objective. We have two of them. Determine if a relation is a function, and then find the value of a function. A lot of new things since we're introducing this stuff, so a few vocab words today as well. Here's the first three. We're talking relations, so we better define it. We're also going to talk about the domain and range of these relations and functions. And then we're going to define uh, functions next. So relations, a set of ordered pairs, normally denoted as x, comma y, where x is your input, y is your output. Those input values, those x's, those are also known as your domain. Domain is the set of all first values in that relation or that function. Range is the opposite. It's all the second values. It's all the outputs, which is typically denoted as all the y's. The last word, oh, actually, before I go to that, take a look at a few examples. These are different relations in table form. You have an input versus an output. All of those numbers would be your domain. They're all your inputs. All of those letters would be your range all of those outputs. Now, the other thing we want to define is function. A function is a special relation in which each element of the domain is paired with exactly one element of the range. Another way of saying it is that there's one and only one output for every input. A way to think of these functions, guys, is kind of like a machine. And I'm putting an input value, our x, into this function machine and it only spits out one y value function notation you have y equals f of x i know before we've seen the parentheses like this we think of it as multiplication a little different when it comes to function it means f of x and all it's really saying guys is it's showing you where the output belongs that y value it's showing you the name of the function. Since it's function, it's mostly going to be called lowercase f, but you might see different names. And then it has the input inside the parentheses. So this notation here is basically telling you exactly what these functions are. You take the input, you plug it into your function, and then out spits the output. Uh, let's look at whether each of these relations is a function. So let's take a look at some of these examples here. You have 2, 3, 3, 0, 5, 2, 4, 3. Remember, relations are just ordered pairs put together. But to be a function, you have to have different x values. So if I'm looking at this one and I'm thinking of my function machine, I have 2 plugged in, spits out a 3. 3 plugs in, spits out a 0. 5 plugs in, spits out a 2. 4 plugs in, spits out a 3. That's exactly what the input-output is of each ordered pair. Now, since all of these x values were different, this is a function. Take a look at another example here. We have 4, 1, 5, 2, 5, 3, 6, 6, 1, 9. Doing the same thing. Plugging in our inputs, spitting out the outputs. I have 4, which spits out a 1, 5, gives me an output of 2, 5 gives me another output of 3, there's a red flag, 6 gives me an output of 6, 1 gives me an output of 9. Guys, because of that double 5, it's paired with two different numbers. That's not a function. We need an x value to only have one output, not two different types. Um, you guys do this one. You have 1, 3, 2, 3, 3, 3. Is this a function, yes or no? For this problem here, guys, it is a function. You have different x values, 1, 2, 3. Yes, all those y's are the same, and maybe that's where we got tricked up if we did, but it's all about the x values when it comes to functions. Are they different? We're good. Um, there's also a way of finding functions off of graphs rather easily, and it's called the vertical line test or a pencil or a pen test. And I'll show you what that is right now. 
vertical line passes through more than one point of the graph, then it's not a function. It would be an X value with more than one output, not a function. So take a look at these examples here. You have this straight line going across the graph in this direction. What I want you to do, I want you to imagine I'm taking a pen and I'm moving it across this graph vertically. If your pen, if your pencil hits the line more than once in the same position, not a function. Another way to visualize that, you've got a bunch of vertical lines. Ugh. Take a look at each time it hits the red line, each time it hits our graph. Well, it looks like it only hits one at each point. Because of that function, there's no repeating X values. Here's another example. We have this U-shaped graph. This is called a parabola, a quadratic function, but we'll get to that much later on. Taking my pen, working through vertical line test. Each time the red line only hits once. This is a function. I got a third one on this slide here. We're looking at this circle. I guess it's more of an oval type shape, but we're looking at this here. Imagine that pen moving across this thing. Does it hit more than once? If you can't imagine it, Take a look at those vertical lines. Do those black vertical lines hit the red circle more than once? The answer is yes, they do. So it's not a function. Take a look at our line right down the middle. We have it hitting up top and then down below as well. Now you could argue it only hits once because this line right here only hits once. But guys, in any part of your graph, if it hits more than once, not a function. So since it hits the top of the circle and the bottom, it hits twice at each point, not a function. I got a few more. Uh, taking a look at this horizontal line going across, that's a function. Taking a look at this vertical line going straight up and down. I mean, that's kind of obvious, right? It hits more than once vertically. That's not a function. Taking a look at this one here, it's another quadratic. This time it's going to the right. Thinking of those vertical lines, hits more than once, not a function. And then take a look at this last one here. This is a funky one. It's actually called a cubic function. It's x to the third power, but we won't have to worry about that too much. Imagine those vertical lines. Turns out they only hit once. This is a function. You guys try this one here. This is an absolute value graph which I don't think we talk about till algebra two, but just for the sake of the vertical line test, is this a function? Yes or no. Turns out this is a function. If I'm doing my vertical line test, it only hits once vertically at each point. No repeating X's means we have a function. Um, I believe there's one last thing I want to go over. Yes, guys, it's it's evaluating. It's solving with these functions. You have f of x equals 3x minus 2. Remember, that's not f times x. That's f of x. This is our function name with our input value inside the parentheses. They're going to give you a regular function like that, and then they're going to ask you to find f of 3. All that means is you take that value you plug it in for X or that variable whenever you see it. And then you just focus on that side. So for this one, I'm going to take that three, plug it into my function machine and replace the variable with that input value, with that input number. And then I just solve away. I have three times three minus two. Working with our order of operations, I should multiply first. That gives me nine minus two, which gives me seven. So my input got plugged into my function and it spat out my output. So f of three equals seven. Here's another one, same function. So we have f of negative two. Again, taking that input, plugging it into my function, replacing the variables with my value. So I have three times negative two now minus two. Three times negative two is negative six. Negative six minus two gives me an output of negative eight. So F of negative two equals negative eight. Let's do some more. 
here's a crazier looking one, but it's the same kind of idea. We're going to find h of negative 3 just by taking our value and plugging it into my function. Whenever I see that variable, that's what I replace with my input. So now I have negative 3 squared instead of z squared. I have negative 4 times negative 3 instead of negative 4 times z, and I have the plus 9 just like before. Negative 3 squared means negative 3 times negative 3. Multiply those together, you get positive 9. Negative 4 times negative 3 gets you positive 12. So you end up having 9 plus 12 plus 9. That gives me an output of 30. So h of negative 3 equals 30. You guys try this one here. x squared minus 2. We want to find when this function is at 4. What would this value be? Okay, so plugging that 4 in, I get 4 squared gets me 16. 16 minus that 2 gives me a value of 14. Hope you guys did all right with that one. For those of us that like a little more of a challenge, I have one last problem for you on this video. It's a challenge problem. You have negative four times the function at three minus the function at one. Take a second, see if you could guess which one of those options is correct. Okay, so if I plug in these values into my function, they're gonna give me that output. That's what I subtract and then multiply by negative four. F of 3, so I plug a 3 in, 2 times 3 makes 6, plus 1, gives me a 7 output here. So imagine this thing is replaced by 7. Plug in a 1. 2 times 1 gets me 2. 2 plus 1 makes 3. So imagine this F of 1 is replaced by its output, 3. So now I have 7 minus 3, which gives me 4, times that negative 4 should give me an answer of negative 16. Challenge problem. Jeez. You won't see a whole lot of these. I'm just curious how, how people did with it. Guys, that's it for 3.2. Thanks for watching the video. We'll see you uh, later on in class.